Welcome to Wild Horse Rides. Today we'll be going over Excel. So again, you may ask, why are we going over Excel when this is a writing channel and also sort of a gaming channel? Well, it's because I'm planning on making a, a writer's tool to sort of assist people with, especially new writers, with different things so they don't go into cliche land and kind of wander off and get lost. There are a bunch of tools that already exist for basically looking at different words that you use too much or that are repetitive. But I kind of want to make a new tool that sort of lets you do drop down options and gives you helpful suggestions, not just um, evaluating uh, word choice. In our past videos, we went over how to record a macro, which is this macro. And then in our most recent video, we went ahead and made manual macros based on the recording. So we simplified the recording information and I showed you how to experiment and try to condense recorded macros. And I will reiterate again, a recorded macro is not a bad thing. So what we're going to do today is have some fun with it. We're going to try to do more commands um, and we'll try to figure out how to, to format things. All right, let's get into it. So we want to delete our favorite color because we don't need it. We want to hide the phone number because we may or may not need it. So we don't want to delete it. We want to italicize the address just because. and Let's also just bold it for fun. Okay. So the first one, let's try to do the address. Let's do this. So address. We're going to say with range. Let's see, it's going to be E2 to. Two. E six dot font. It's gonna say dot bold, and we're gonna dot italic, italic it, and then let's see. Let's see, might have to do this. I'm not sure. Wow, that was so easy. So I want to show you a new feature and actually, I actually discovered this one in this annoying book that's really mean to normal people. Um, the with feature, which basically uh, tells it to do multiple commands. So instead of just saying, I want to uh, font, make it bold, and then saying, I want to font, make it italics, I want to font, make it whatever, um, you can actually change all that at one time by using with. So we say with the specific range we gave. So it's very simple. We looked at where it was. So the address started in E2 and it went all the way down to E6. So with the range, and remember they have to be parentheses and quotation marks, um, this specific range, we're going to dot font like we usually do, but instead of doing one at a time, we go dot bold is true dot italic is true and I think we can change the color to dot color all right here we go let's try to rerun it ooh that was yellow <laughs> oh no <laughs> and I'll take it it's green <laughs> it's close enough I can read it so as you can see I don't memorize colors but if you do like that kind of thing, you can just go to Google and so let's save it. That was our address. So again, in summation, we can use the with feature. And if you don't know exactly what's available under the with feature, which is what I should have done, uh, we can go through and look at the different options by pu just putting a dot there, a period, and it shows you all the things it's capable of. And then, we, of course, after we type with, so just think of with as like, What's wrong with this range? So, with this range, I want the font to be da 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 da. So I bet if we really wanted to, you could always take off the strikeout by putting false. So we took the strikeout out. Oh, I did turn it white. Oh, 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 that's me. I figured it out. Just me. There's no white in this book. I figured that out. 
Well, I saw where black was 000, and the color limit was 255. Uh, so I figure if all of them were 255, if black was 000, then white must be the opposite of that, so it must be 255. Okay. Got the address, sort of. I totally messed up that, but we'll go over that later. Let's save it. We got that one done. Next macro, we need to make the phone number hidden. So let's do this sub phone number macro. And remember, always name it something that's in English that you understand, unless you don't speak English. Then name it in whatever language you speak and make it legible. And I would still put it in English because what if you want to, it's so cool, you want to share it with the whole world or something like that. So watch this. I'm so goofy. Bam, it worked. So as you can see, that macro is one line long. All right, I unhit it again. Favorite color, we don't need that. So sub remove fave color range G uh, G delete because we don't need it right well it's gone again notice how that simple macro is like three words I don't know if that's a word but three pieces long and that's it so this for a regular person who does not do programming or crazy stuff these things are pretty much all you need let's make one one big macro so mega macro so we go to with okay we got the address one I'm just making it red I don't need all this because that's when you see R it's easier to show you R G B red green blue so the first number is always red the second one is the greens and the the B is for blue so if I just type 255 Excel is super cool and it knows what I meant was red because that's the first one in there now let's see if we can save it I'm gonna go make another copy of my data set because I know I like making copies of stuff and let's see where's my macro well, let's go ahead and try to run it cross the fingers it may or may not work Wow it worked very fast so it did everything we told it to do it deleted the phone number, excuse me, it deleted the favorite color because we don't care about Spider-Man's favorite color. It hid his phone number just in case we need to call him and it highlighted and italicized and turned the font green in the address. So we were able to put those little pieces into one macro and it's very simple. It does exactly what you want it to do. The other thing I wanna show you is how to copy and paste using the macro. So, so what we're going to do is say range, and where is the address? It's an E, so we're going to say E2, let's actually do the whole thing, E1 to E6 dot copy, and this is going to be a shortcut. It may be harder. Um, you can see it's already telling you what to do. It's telling you, put the destination where you're going to put it. Some people say paste or whatever, but we're just going to tell it where it to go. It's very simple. Sort of like the shortcut we use for the color. We just gave it the color number and it assumes the place. Well, when I put this um, command in that place, Excel assumes I'm talking about pasting it. So we're going to paste it in G1 range, G1 to G6. And, uh... That's going to paste it, and then we want to make, um, let's see, range G, uh, uh, G2 to G6. We want it to be interior color 
equals what I did last time 255, 255, 255. All right. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to paste it and let's see if it works. Uh, Mega Macro. Wow, did you see that? So I just simply told it to find this range. I want you to copy it. Remember, this is our verb. And then it automatically assumes that I meant paste because if you put a, a location right after it, it's going to put it in there. So we were able to copy and paste with a macro that easily. So if you're doing a report and you always have to copy one report, I could even copy it to a different sheet. So let's make a sheet. Let's test it. This is going to be now the sheet name is sheet four. But you have to keep in mind this is the second sheet in the workbook so let's try to do something like that forgive me if this goes badly let's say range g2 g1 to g6 dot copy and then we're going to say worksheets we want to paste it in worksheets dot range worksheets 2 dot range let's say a1 to A6. I don't want you to do that. Okay. Let's see what happens. I'm going to run it again. All right. Um, doesn't look anything happen. Let's go over and check. <gasps> Yay! It pasted it over to a different worksheet. Let's see. And you could even paste between workbooks, but we're not doing that today. So, just to sum up today, what we did. We learn how to delete columns and by the way you can um, delete bigger ranges if you need to so if you need to go from G1 to L1 or something like that you just type G1 colon L1 dot delete and it will delete it or if you want to go between columns and say delete um, range I don't know G to K it will delete all those columns between it now it also says okay we also did uh, with which is basically a command to do multiple tasks for a given font or anything so if you have a range and you want to do multiple multiple variations of the same action like um, I can do multiple interior changes I could do multiple font changes multiple whatever width is good for that so you just do again with you list your action then you list the specifics of that action in order and then you always have to end with in width um, then we learn how to code the interior of a cell we learn to hide a cell uh, we also learn to copy and paste into the same worksheet we learn to copy and paste into a different worksheet and uh yeah that's what we did today that was a lot it was pretty simple um i know again we have that date of birth one i'm going to show you why i didn't go over it <laughs> it's a little bit complicated um i got it to work but i would have to explain a lot of stuff so we're not doing that today next video we will though so hold on tight um as always, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comments below. I'm looking forward to working with Excel and messing up a lot with you next time.